right, so I'm going to discuss how to use the Add Cloud function in Thinkorswim. Add Cloud adds a color layer over top of your uh, plot. We're going to talk about how to limit that down into a vertical range, how to do a horizontal range. We're then going to combine the two like you see here. We've got this between 4 and 10 o'clock and between the high of the day and the low of the day. And then we're going to talk about how to do it on two uh, lines that are going up and down. We'll finish it off by talking about how to utilize this to get a light gray background in the post-market and the pre-market hours down here in the lower study to match the upper price graph. All right, so let's come up here and go to Studies, Edit Studies. We'll make sure we're on the Studies tab, and then we'll click Create or we can open up a scroll we've already created. We'll come in here and then uh, we'll add a cloud by saying add cloud. And then we're going to give it four parameters and we'll discuss exactly what these do in a minute, but we're going to give it top, bottom. This is the color. And then we're going to give it another color on parameter four. We'll talk about what that's used for in a minute. But early on in this video, we're just going to be using that third variable there. All right, so we're going to define the top and the bottom. Now, when we're talking about a horizontal cloud, the top is going to be the top of that cloud, bottom is going to be the bottom. <clears throat> when we're talking about a vertical cloud, the top is going to be the right side and the bottom is going to be the left side. So let's start out by putting a cloud on the entire screen. How would we do that if we wanted to color the entire screen? So we would say uh, defining top equals double dot positive infinity. Then we would define bottom as double dot negative infinity. Neg uh, double meaning number in thinkorswim. So we're saying number positive infinity and negative infinity. So all the way up, all the way down. Click apply. You can see that that added my yellow cloud. So let's start out with a horizontal cloud. Let's say we wanted it to show a, a horizontal yellow cloud on any candle that's before 10 o'clock in the morning. How would we do that? <clears throat> so we'll come up here to the top variable and we'll say if seconds till time 10 o'clock is greater than zero then double dot positive infinity then we'll add on the end of that else double dot nam hit apply you can see there that that's reduced it to where it's only showing that yellow cloud from the 10 o'clock candle and before add in another parameter if we wanted it to be let's say uh, 930 to 10 o'clock we would say if uh, seconds till time 0930 it's less than zero and seconds till time is greater than zero that narrows it down that way so that's vertical now let's do a horizontal uh, cloud how would we do that so in a lot of codes you may see the most basic example where they just put a number here. So we would say 177 as the top, 174 as the bottom. You can see that draws a cloud between those two numbers of 177 and 174. You can also do some more dynamic stuff though. We'll start out by coming up here and defining uh, what I'm going to do here is draw a line at the very high of the day and the very low of the day and then we'll color the areas in between that so we'll define high of day equals high period equals aggregation period dot day so what that means is the high of the day we'll plot that And we'll give it a color, ph.assign value color 
of green. Do the same thing for low a day. And then we'll do the same thing. Sign a color, except do this one as a red line. All right, so let's go ahead and apply that. You can see now we've got a green line and a red line here. And so to get the area there uh, shaded in between those, what we would do is down here on the top and the bottom, erase all this out. We'll say high of day. And then low of day. We'll put these back down here, top, bottom. And there we go. We've got the yellow cloud in between two um, items on the graph. So now let's bring the horizontal and the vertical together where we do one that's both horizontally and vertically constrained. So we've got the horizontal parameters of the high of day and the low of day. So come down here and we'll add in our vertical parameter. So we'll say if seconds till time, 10 o'clock is greater than zero, then now remember when we were doing it the first time we had double dot positive infinity here, but now we'll do whatever our upper vertical limit will be. In this case, it's going to be high of day. And we'll say else double dot in a n. We'll apply that. And now you can see that we're having a cloud that is only between the bars of 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. And then it has to be between the high of day and the low of day. So let's talk about this fourth color here. When would you use this? What's the point of it? And if we had two, um, if we were plotting two lines on the graph that were going uh, squiggly, for lack of better terms, if they were going up and down. So uh, we've got the, the closing price here, and then we'll also do a uh, SMA, say uh, define. SMA 9, well, do, let's do 50. SMA 50, simple moving average. Let's make that simple. Simple moving ABG, we'll do close and then 9. get rid of these two lines up here and so what we'll do is we'll define the top is going to be closed doesn't matter which ones are which here in this situation uh, we'll say SMA 50 for the bottom and these are going to be like uh, at various times maybe the close might be above the SMA 50 and then at other times uh, the close will be below the SMA 50 and so it, that's where these come in whenever that top is above the bottom it's going to be variable 3 Whenever the bottom is above the top, it's going to be variable four. So we'll change the color of that red. Go ahead and plot that. And I said 50 here, so let's change that to 50. All right, now you can see that whenever the close is above that SMA 50, it's using that third parameter of yellow. Then whenever the SMA 50 is above the close, it's using the uh, color of red. So we can think of it as whenever the first parameter is higher than the second one, that's the third one.
whenever this one's higher than this one, that's the red. So let's do a useful use case of this. Um, you can see up here that we have some discoloration on the pre-market and the post-market. I'll close out of this. You see that the post-market hours and the pre-market hours are a shade of gray, and then the regular trading hours are black in the background. Um, and so this is useful to help determine when the market is open and when it's in the after hour session. But you can see down here in the lower studies, it doesn't have that gray coloring. So we can use this to add that gray coloring in down here. I'll come back over here to the study. I'll drag it down here to the lower study. Next, what I'll do is copy in a snippet of code that I use to help me with separating the pre-market, regular trading hours, and post-market session. Uh, basically, what this does is whenever we type in pre-market trading hours, regular trading hours, or post-market trading hours, it'll only affect those bars. <clears throat> So what we'll do down here, get rid of this. Remember, we'll go back to the horizontal. And so what we'll want here is double dot positive infinity, double dot negative infinity down here. And then on the top, we'll do an if statement. If the time is post-market, trading hours or pre-market trading hours, then double dot positive infinity, else double dot NAN. And we'll change the color down here to gray. Click apply. Apply that one more time. There we go. So you can see now we have a gray background on the lower study for the pre-market and the post-market, and then a, a regular black background for the regular trading hours.